Uh, Jack, can you make sure he's all set? All right, we're going to get going tonight. Good evening. Welcome to the January 14th uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. To my left is Mr. Carter Falk, who's the Deputy Planning Manager for the City of Nashua. Across the way, we have Mr. Jamin Kara, Mr. Robert Shaw, Mr. Steve Lionel, who acts as our Vice President, Mr. Jack Currier, Ms. Mary Ellen McKay, who acts as our Secretary, and I'm J.P. Boucher, uh, your Chair tonight. This meeting is recorded by a written transcript, audio tape, and video. We ask that you direct all testimony to the microphone, and then only one person speak at a time. If you don't have tonight's copy of tonight's agenda, you'll find it on the side table, uh, right on the side underneath the screen there. Tonight we'll be hearing requests of de deviations in the National Zoning Code in the form of applications for special exceptions and variances. And I'll explain both of those to you. A special exception is a request that seeks permission to do something that that the zoning ordinance permits only under special circumstances. The five criteria required for this board to grant a request for a special exception are, one, the requested use must be listed in the table of use regulations as a special exception. Two, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. The requested use will not overload any public water, drainage, sewer system, or any other municipal system such that other areas of the city will be subjected to hazards affecting health, safety, or general welfare. Four, any special regulations for this use set forth in other sections of the zoning ordinance are fulfilled. And five, the requested use will not impair the integrity or character of the zoning district of the district of adjoining zones, nor be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents of Nashua. A variance is a request that seeks permission to do something that the ordinance does not permit. The five criteria that need to be established for the approval of a variance are one, the variance will not be contrary to public interest. Two, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Three, substantial justice is done. Four, the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. And five, the literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. For the city of national bylaws, a minimum of three or more affirmative votes are required to prove any application. In addition, this board will hear any and all scheduled cases as long as a quorum of three voting board members are present at this meeting. Any citizen has the right to contest the decision that this board makes. Should we make a decision that you believe is an error, you have the right to request a rehearing. A written rehearing request must be received through Mr. Falk in the City and National Planning Department within 30 calendar days from the day after a decision was made. Should this board not grant a rehearing request, you can file an appeal directly, directly to the New Hampshire Superior Court. You can contact Mr. Falk for more information on that. Per our approved Zoning Board of Adjustment bylaws, the review and decision of each application occurs in two parts. The first part is the public hearing. This is where the applicant and the citizens address this board and speak to the merits of the case. The order of testimony will be as follows. The applicant will have 15 minutes to present their case. Then those in favor will have a limit of five minutes each to speak. Then those in opposition or with questions will have a limit of five minutes each to speak. Then the applicant has five minutes to speak in rebuttal. And then finally, a representative and only one person of those in opposition or with questions will have five minutes to speak in rebuttal. We ask that you uh, please direct all testimony to this board and not to anyone in the audience. If you have any questions about the application, they're to be directed to the board and we'll get those answered. Second part uh, of our meetings tonight are called the public meeting. This is where the board debates the merits of this case amongst ourselves. Please note that during the public meeting, there is no testimony allowed from the audience. We ask that you silence your cell phones. If you need to have a conversation, we ask you to step out in the hall. Um, acoustics are great in this room. We can hear uh, everything that's being said in the audience. Mr. Falk, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? No, there are not. Okay, so um, Mr. Minkara is a alternate member. So Mr. Minkara will have the ability to participate in all our discussions in our public, um, uh, both our public meetings. Um, if there's anybody that recuses themselves or leaves uh, for any reason, Mr. Mincaro will be um, voting on the cases. But other than that, uh, he'll participate but not vote if the five permanent members are sitting. Um, I think I've covered everything there. Um, I understand, Mr. Dowd, of Alderman Dowd, that you would like to make a statement before we start? Yes. Thank you. 
<clears throat> Good evening. I'm speaking now because I have to be downstairs for <laughs> Board of Aldermen agenda. Uh, the first case is the one that I'd like to speak to. It's the replacement of the tank at Kessler Farm. The existing tank has been rusting for many years and is an eyesore for the people who live at Kessler Farm. And the tank itself is critically important to the city as it provides the water and the water pressure for that whole northern part of the city. The other part of this is the emergency communication system for the city of Nashua for police, fire, and other emergency personnel is located in the same land. And they have uh, years ago negotiated with Kessler Farm, the Penichuk, and the city to have that antenna there. That is critically important and will be replaced first before they tear down the other tank because right now the antennas are on top of the tank. I don't want to steal their thunder. So I just want to say that I'm very much in support of this. It's very critical to the city and hope that you find favorably for it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, I will call the first case to order. First case is Uden Owners Associations of the Villages at Kessel Farms Condominium. Owner is Penichuk Waterworks. The applicant, um, the owner that Penichuk Waterworks is the applicant. It says 69 Kessler Farm Drive, Sheet G, Lot 592. Requesting a special exception from Land Use Code Section 190-15, Table 15-1, Number 278, to replace an existing water tank with a new one, uh, 11. 11.33 feet taller in the same location. It's in the R9 Zone War II. Welcome. Your name and address, please. Thank you very much. Nicholas S. Frasca, attorney, 2 Auburn Street, Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, also in attendance with me is John Boisvert from Penichuk Waterworks, uh, Ryan Houle, and Pete Tetter, also from Penichuk, and Jim Petropolis from Hainer Swanson. Uh, this is a request for special exception for replacement of an existing steel water tank, which is located at Kessler Farm Condominium. Um, City of Nashua, Map G, Lot 592 is exactly where it's located. The existing tank, as has been stated by Alderman Dowd, has been on location since 1987. Uh, it's in a state of disrepair right now and is in need of replacement. Now, the trend today is to replace steel tanks with cement tanks, and the logic there is that the cement tanks have a longer useful life that being about 80 years, and require significantly less maintenance. Um, as has been stated, the only difference between the existing water tank and the new water tank is as to height. Uh, the new tank will be 11.33 feet higher than the existing structure, and that's because of the, the design of the new structure. Uh, the new structure has a pitched roof to it, and that makes it slightly higher than the existing steel tank. Uh, the project will involve some demolition of the existing steel structure and replacement with a new structure, and that should take about eight to 10 months. Uh, the project does satisfy all the requirements, all the criteria for special exception under the ordinance. Uh, it is listed in the table of uses, that's table 15-1, number 278. Uh, and as the structure already exists, it won't create any undue traffic congestion or, or impair any pedestrian safety. Uh, it won't overload any public utility. Uh, there are no special regulations uh, for this use, which, which use is the same as the existing use. Uh, and as the use already exists, it won't be out of character with, with what's already there. And for these reasons, we ask that uh, you request that you, you grant a request for a special exception. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Mr. Lino? Just as a matter of curiosity, when, as the, the old tank is demolished, what will Penichuk be doing to maintain the water pressure for that neighborhood? Uh, as, as to technical aspects of the projects, I'd, I'd defer to, yeah. to John. <clears throat> 
Good evening. For the record, it's John Boisvert from Penichuk Water. I'm the chief engineer, and I met 25 Manchester Street in Merrimack at our corporate office. Um, what we've done um, this year is to maintain the pressures is we've made significant improvements to the distribution, the piping system in that northwest part of uh, the Nashua system and leading all the way out into Amherst. So you saw some construction on um, Manchester Street, which increased the size of some piping that we had from 12 inch to 24 inch. We've replaced some smaller mains. We've added pipeline out in the vicinity of Manchester, I mean, I'm sorry, Nashua Airport um, that creates some piping loops out there that'll include um, improve the water delivery and will also help um, <coughs> us push water into the system from our pumping stations at the treatment plant, as well as bring water back from the existing, what we call Bond Terrain Tank, which is in Amherst. If you head out towards Milford, you can see the tank uh, towards uh, on your left before you um, get out uh, towards 101. Um, so there's that will help bring back water when we need it in emergency conditions. Plus, we've improved the pipe um, pumping capacity out into our system with the piping. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else like to speak in favor of this application? Seeing none. Anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition to this application? Come on up, ma'am. Give us your name and address. Have to bring this down a little. Sure. Lower. My name is Denise Trombley, and I live at 70 Ramsgate Ridge in Nashua. Um, one of my questions was already answered. I was concerned about the consistency and the water pressure up there for safety reasons, and also just to be have it be livable. Um, my questions were in three different categories. The first was safety in terms of the traffic on Ramsgate. Um, as you see, the tank is like right where my place is. <clears throat> Just speak on the mic, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I can point. Um, and so the concern was how much traffic will be on Ramsgate Ridge because there are a lot of children there. Um, and it's kind of a dead end, and it does lead to the water tank. So the traffic is an issue, um, construction <coughs> traffic. And I understand that uh, it was said that it would be limited, but I need to understand what limited means. So um, the timing, I guess, is spring into summer, but I, I'd like clarification on that as well. Um, the dust and dirt and noise. There are a lot of people who live in those tight spaces who work third shift. Um, and you know, so the noise might be an issue. Um, and I don't know about the dust and dirt during demolition or construction. So I, we kind of need to understand that a little bit better. Um, the other thing is simply the, um, what it looks like. Um, when I first moved there, the trees were that, that little, and now they kind of cover the tank, so it makes it a lot more appealing. So I'd like to see if the um, trees will be larger than little baby trees. I haven't got another 30 years to wait. <laughs> Um, for the trees to grow to make it appealing so that for resale um, or any other reason. So I'd like to ensure that the trees are larger than the little baby trees. Um, it, it, also in terms of future maintenance, what the cement will require um, is important. Um, <clears throat> the traffic, um, yeah, the dust from the drilling was a big thing. Like will we be able to go outside all summer or open our windows or you know, how are they going to mitigate the, um, the dust and dirt and mess? So those were the basic questions. All right, well, um, the applicant will have a chance to come back up and give their answer to that. That'll, uh, that'll be really helpful. I can report any, back to the neighborhood. All right. Anything else you'd like to add? No, nope, that's it. All right, hold on. Any questions for the applicant, for this uh, <clears throat> person? No. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you, and thank you for asking that question. Because it did. Sir. Anybody else like to speak? In, with uh, uh, questions, concern, or opposition? <coughs> Seeing none, um, sir, it will be a <coughs> chance to come back up and rebuttal and maybe answer some of those questions the applicant, uh, this person had, sorry. Yeah, I, I think your, your first question. You can question raise the mic. You can raise the mic. Okay, thank you. Make it comfortable for you. Her, her first question was asked to safety. Uh, with respect to, to traffic on Ramsgate. Uh, Ramsgate will not be used during construction. Uh, construction will be limited to um, Kessler Farm Drive. So Kessler Farm Drive will be used. Um, 
I think the next question was asked to timing of the project. The project is, if approved, will we'll start in March. Um, and as stated before, it should last a period of eight to 10 months. Uh, as to dust, dirt, and noise, uh, we'll be using best management practices um, as, as to that. Um, the appearance of the structure, um, a good example with, with, uh, with respect to the appearance would be the cement tank that's over at uh, Riviera University. So it'll be sim very similar in appearance to that. Uh, and as to future maintenance, um, there's limited maintenance with regard to the cement tanks. Um, <coughs> you know, these things last 80 years. Uh, and um, I think this is uh, much different from maintenance of a steel tank, which requires much more significant maintenance. Every 15 years you're painting it. And this particular tank was painted several years ago and it caused a lot of disturbance. Uh, probably as much dirt and dust as would um, you know, the demolition and uh, construction of a new tank. So, um, you know, even if a new ta uh, an existing tank were to remain there, there'd be the same level of dirt and dust and disturbance. Uh, and this way, less disturbance and, you know, this, this tank's gonna last for 80 years. So I, I think that addresses all of the questions. It was only other question about the trees. Uh, the trees are, wherever the size they are, uh, uh, so how is that gonna look now? I guess maybe she's trying to wonder if they're taking any of the trees out or it's going to exist. Yeah, there will be some tree cutting um, to, to accommodate the new structure. Yeah, okay. mostly on the north side. But it'll be limited to the extent that, that we can. But there, there certainly will be some cutting. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. McCara? So will there be any new trees planted in areas where trees have been taken out? Um, I think the applicant will consider that. And they'll they'll put together an app, the standard uh, landscaping plan with respect to tree removal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, per our rules, ma'am, if you want to come back up, you you have five minutes to speak in rebuttal. Sure, it won't take that long. Sure. Just in terms of clarification, so I'm not. Name, uh, just your name and yep. address again. Pardon? Name and address again. Sure, it's Denise Trombley, 70 Ramsgate Ridge. Um, just in terms of clarification, because I'm not a construction person, um, the, the tree, what is standard practice for trees? I, I don't know. You know, I just don't want the little bitty ones. So, so, so. ma'am, this, this case will, <coughs> will go to the planning board. And so what I would do yep. is I would show up at the planning board meeting, because this is where they'll talk about the site plan. Okay, this is it. really kind of where that will, will end up. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and also, I, what the other thing I didn't understand is um, best management practices in terms of the dust and dirt. What's that mean? Well, I, mean, I think that's basically, you know, they go, they're going to contain that as much as, po as they can yeah. possibly. So they're not going to, um, you know, they're, they're a neighbor, right? So they don't want to make this big mess. But I think in the, in the construction industry, they're going to um, do everything to limit it, runoff. They're not going to allow anything to go outside. They're supposed to c contain everything within the perimeter of their their property. Oh, got it. During so the construction good. phase. So the, there'd be like a cover over it. So oh, no, I don't know what that would be. Uh, oh, honestly, okay. we can we can ask that question if you'd like. Uh, I don't know what that would be like, but uh, again, they're they're bound to keep that as as minimally invasive as possible to the surrounding area. It's not like it was 30, 40 years ago where they just go in and with a wrecking ball and take it out. Yeah, no, I understand yeah. that, but I just needed qual some qualification to understand what best practices were since I'm not in the industry. That's all. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah they're, they're going to make sure that there's, there's no hazardous waste there. They're, they, they're going to make sure that they find anything, that they um, follow the correct protocol that, that the state and the federal government have them do. So um, there's a lot that goes into this project, um, and I think... Um, if you need more questions, I'm sure that Mr. Yeah. Bovray would be more than happy to answer those for you. Yeah. Uh, he's really good with that. So I, I think there's nothing, there's nothing that they're hiding. So No, no, I, right. and, and I'm, not, I'm not implicating that. I just need to understand sure. better. So, so if that's okay, if you feel comfortable, would you be okay with contact oh, Mr. Bovray? absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I'm not shy. Any other questions or concerns? I'm all set. Thank all right. you. Thanks for coming. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Okay, with that, I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. 
Mr. Shaw. Um, I mean, all the criteria are met, and I see uh, no reason not to approve this. I'm fine with supporting it. Mr. Lino? I agree. I think uh, I feel the application stands on its own. I didn't know if that was private land or not, so I didn't go to look at it in person. I was curious about if or what a butters would would you know had any concerns. <clears throat> I appreciate uh, Ms. Trombley coming tonight to express those concerns. Uh, I I think the best management practices on behalf of the uh, Penichuk, I they're they're going to do no less than what the state mandates, and you know going to be some noise it's going to be some traffic on Kessler Farm Drive but there's no avoiding that but uh, <clears throat> so I'm in support of it as it is proposed Ms. McKay I'm in support I'm also in support also like, anybody like to make a motion Mr. Carrillo <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion on behalf of uh, the owners the unit owners association <coughs> at Villages of Kessler Farms. Again, the applicant is Penichuk Waterworks, and the request before us is a special exception uh, from Land Use Code 190-15, and that's Table 15-1, number uh, 278, and it's to replace an existing water tank with a new water tank that's 11.33 11 feet taller in the same location. Uh, as I just stated, this special re exception request is listed in the table of uses. Uh, I think the board finds that in, in totality, they'll not create any undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. I think the board recognizes that there'll be some construction, there'll be construction traffic during the active uh, replacement of it, uh, but uh, the long term will be no net effect. In fact, I, I, I would say there's less traffic overall because concrete tank isn't going to require the the painting and the higher maintenance that the steel does uh, well I think the board finds it will not overload public water drainage sewer or other municipal system I mean the whole point of this upgrade is to provide consistent public water and uh, I think the board has confidence that this upgrade will will uh, improve the and ensure the public water continued supply uh, the special regulations uh, are fulfilled um, and I think the board finds it will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the neighborhood or to be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents. I think the board finds it. It'll improve, uh, again, the water service, which is in uh, everybody's best interest. So I make a motion to approve as presented. Mr. Lionel, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's five to nothing. Congratulations. The application has been approved. With that, I'll close case number one. Mr. Uh, Boucher, uh, I'm going to recuse myself on case number two. I'm uh, a customer of the uh, applicant's of butter, and uh, I prefer to recuse myself. All right. Um, I will also be recusing myself in case number two. All right. All right. So, Mr. Lino. Uh, okay. The call case number two. Uh, Jose Mendez and Angela Lero, owners. Angela Lero, applicant. Address is 13, uh, is it Alder? Or Alder Drive, okay. It's uh, sheet 139, lot 112. Requesting special exception from land use code section 190-47, section B, to allow a major home occupation for an in-home daycare for 12 children. This is in the R9 zone, ward six. Uh, the applicant uh, come up and please give your name and address and walk us through your application please hi my name is Angela Laro I live at 13 Alder Drive I'm here today to um, request a special exception to have um, run an in-home daycare um, welcome thank you my first time doing something like this so I'm not really sure what I should this is, say this is my first time <laughs> leading th this meeting so uh, <laughs> So uh, your application doesn't say an awful lot. So you know, what, what is your, your background here? Uh, what have you been doing before? Uh, um, I've worked in many child cares. I'm almost done my degree in early child, childhood education. Um, I currently take care of my two children with three other children. And I would like to still stay home and take care of my children while providing child care for other families, um, while providing for my own family at the same time. 
Okay, and uh, your proposal is, uh, do you have any modifications of your, your home that you're planning to use for, uh, for this? Um, we, I plan on using my basement, which will be finished. Um, and the only modifications we have made is working on an egress to exit the basement so the children have two exits. Okay. Um, when I went by your property, I saw that there were uh, what looked like con uh, uh, construction vehicles or something parked in, the, in this uh, back lot. Are they going to continue to be there, or is, is that part of the, uh, the area that you would use for this daycare? Um, no, they will not be, and I do plan on using that area for parking to avoid any traffic congestion or any cars parked on the street. Okay. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the, the state regulations regarding uh, in-home daycare and, and number of children. Uh, Twelve is, is higher than I'm used to seeing. Are, are you familiar with what those regulations allow? Uh, uh, Mr. Falk ha can, can say yes. Uh, for a residential use, the maximum that our city code allows is 12 children. Um, you can watch three in your house without any approval by the city. Uh, the maximum you can have is 12, but the land area has to meet the minimum zoning district requirements. And the applicant does have a, lo a lot that is larger than the, the minimum uh, that the R9 requires. So her lot size is okay, and she's basically asking for the maximum number of children that the code allows. Okay, thank you. And uh, will it be just yourself who's watching these 12 children, or do you have somebody else who will be helping um, It you? is myself and my best friend who's here with me tonight that will be working with me to take care of these 12 children. Okay. Um, are there any other board members who have uh, questions? Mr. McCara. Uh, could you talk a bit about, I, I had the same you know, question about the, the vehicles on the site. So you mentioned that you're gonna use that area for parking. So uh, just first of all, uh, is that going to be paved or unpaved? And can you talk a bit about how vehicles are going to circulate on the property? How are they going to access the parking area and exit? Um, well, they'll have um, access to my driveway, which would fit two more cars. Um, and where the other parking is, is my side yard. It's big enough to where they could go in and turn around in it and come back out. I'm not sure if that's... So you're going to pave another a, a um, driveway It's not currently paved. It has like... Um, pebbles almost I don't know exactly what they're called um, it's not dirt my dad put it down for me so I'm not 100% sure what they're East called stone or something yeah like that. something like that so that the cars have access and they won't be driving through mud and lawn um, and we do have an, um, an entrance from the fence that way so they can walk to the back egress to enter my home and I assume if I may that you'll be creating an outdoor play area Yes, I actually brought pictures of the parking and my fenced-in backyard for where they're going to have a play, in, play area. Do you, are those pictures that are not in your application that you'd like to present to the um, board? Yes, if I could. Yes, way please. You guys yeah. know. Hand them to Mr. Mancara, please. Can I give them to you? Yes. And, and we need to hold on to those for 30 Perfect. days. Please You're fine. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a couple of minutes to, uh, to look at those. Are anybody else with questions? Ms. McKay? No? Mr. Shaw. I wanted to also check in about um, the, uh, I think you have the hours as Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 5. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was definitely your, your planned restriction. Yes, like it is. I, That's currently what I do with the three children I care for now. Okay. And then uh, what about outdoor playtime? Oftentimes uh, we end up, uh, there's, there might be stipulations regarding the time of day uh, for outdoor play. A lot of times that's a concern uh, with, uh, with neighbors. I don't know if you have any specific plan already or what you've contemplated in that regard. Um, I have thought about that and we would not go outside before 9.30 in the morning. Okay, thank you. I think that's it at the moment. Okay. We're just going to take a, a moment to look at these photos. Mr. Lyon. I can also. So <coughs> it, there's one that shows a couple of pieces of like uh, you know, play equipment. Is that more the area where the 
the, yes. the play area will be mm -hmm. established versus some of the others are the ones where the parking is, right? Yeah, it's yeah. separate from the parking. Yeah, and that's, that's all in, in, enclosed by the fence right yes. now. Okay, all right, thank you. Please do. Oh. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, a question. I don't see it. Do you have um, ages of the children that you will be caring for? And will any of the children, or do you know if any of the children have any disabilities? And if that's an issue, are you able to accommodate and modify for that? Situation. Um, I know by state regulations that the 12 children, I can only have four of them under three, okay. um, and the rest will be above three in school age. Um, as far as disabilities, I haven't come across that issue, but I would definitely accommodate if needed. Thank you. Please do. Um, also, just um, so I wanted to go back. You also said, I think, that you're, you're currently basically taking care of three children? Yes, I am. All right. And then uh, one of the things I know this board has found ourselves doing uh, in other times in the past is looking to potentially do a uh, limited approval uh, uh, for perhaps six or nine children uh, prior to going to the 12 because it's a pretty significant, uh, you know, usage and uh, oftentimes between the concerns generally of, of when there isn't really a, an established uh, a daycare already and oftentimes uh, neighbors concerns about the scope of what might be going on so I don't know uh, how you feel about that and uh, if, if you've thought about you know the, any sort of uh, possible transition that uh, you, you would be perhaps okay with uh, and or obviously this board might still want to consider and still you know uh, would, would need to uh, limit but kind of curious as to where that might put you with your plans um, honestly I haven't thought about going lower than 12 um, I've always been familiar with working with many children I have um, many years of experience with more children than just three or nine um, but obviously whatever you guys decide is what's going to happen um, I don't feel that I would need to transition from six to nine just because I've been doing this for 20 plus years. Um, but like I said, anything you could decide, um, I will do. Thank you. Yep. Mrs. McKay, are you done with the photos? So, okay. Oh, I passed them on to Carter. Okay, yeah, so you, you hold on to those, right? Okay. Um, if there are no more questions from the board, uh, thank you. You may take the Thank you very seat. much. <clears throat> Is there anybody in the audience in, who wants to speak in favor of this application? Yeah, please come up, give your name and address. <clears throat> Let's raise that up as necessary. <laughs> my name is Brianna Dienta. I live at 137 Peel Road. Um, and two of my children are currently cared for by Angie. Um, and talking about the children with um, special needs or different needs, I actually, my son has a chronic illness that deals with food allergies, and Angie has been incredible. Um, putting him in a center really leaves chances of him eating the wrong thing, which can be pretty detrimental to his health. Um, and we've just been so fortunate, and she makes it so that working families um, can find affordable quality care for their children in a very loving place. Um, my kids, my little one, she's two and a half, she doesn't like many people. <laughs> the minute she met Angie, she ran in and she didn't turn back. Um, so being able to have more kids for them to play with will really open up the doors for more learning and different activities with the kids and it will just be a great opportunity for more working families to have quality, affordable childcare 
because that's a huge issue. Their affordable childcare doesn't exist. Um, so I really hope that you can pass this for her and for other working families like myself. Thank you. Uh, oh. wait, just wait to see if anybody on the board has a question for you. No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak in favor of this application? Seeing none, anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition to this application? I see none. Uh, with that, I'm going to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, anybody like to, on the board like to comment? Uh, Mr. McCarra will be voting on, on this uh, issue. I, I, I would support the application. Uh, while, while 12 is definitely a, a large number of children, I, I think in, in this case, the, uh, this is a larger than usual lot. Uh, there's already a child care business on the site. Clearly, uh, you know, the applicant is experienced and uh, the site does appear to be able to accommodate parking access and we haven't heard any concerns or objections from any neighbors about issues related to parking or access or drop off as, as we have in some prior applications where maybe the site was tighter. So I would support the application. Yeah, I am. Uh, I, I concur with Mr. Mankara. Uh, I think that, uh, that yeah, there's, there's a lot of things kind of in, I think in favor of this application regarding the site itself uh, and its ability to accommodate this, this kind of scope. I also think that uh, just even the placement of, of the home and the abutting in the back uh, to both the Everett Turnpike and then uh, even the other properties are uh, not necessarily that close, especially to like the play area. Uh, so I think those are good. And also I, it's pretty clear that the applicant, uh, you know, has, a, a, you know, this is not just a, a new endeavor, uh, already has, a, you know, a, a, a many years of experience. And uh, so I think as far as uh, capabilities. Obviously, there's all the things that still have to be dealt with with the state as far as, you know, the certifications and licensing. And so you know, there's a lot of things I think we you know, often can count on that being part of well, we'll guarantee you know, a certain part of the uh, assurances that, that there won't be issues in that regard. But I think confidence level as far as, again, uh, uh, this applicant's uh, capabilities and abilities is, uh, is also uh, it appears to be very strong. So. Uh, uh, I think that uh, in, in general, uh, I'm support. I would, I would definitely just uh, for whoever's making uh, a, a motion, I do think it's important to at least note uh, that limitation on no outside play before 9:30. I think that's a fairly consistent type of uh, stipulation uh, with uh, many of these uh, applications. I think it's a generally uh, reasonable kind of time for uh, that that limitation. That's that's about. The only thing I would ask uh, to be supported, uh, Mr. Falk, looks like I'll say the trucks. There shouldn't be any of the neighbors' oh, yeah, trucks yeah, in that a, lot. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good not point. allowed. Right now, that was kind of by testimony, but I think it's probably good to just have that uh, explicitly stated as well. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, would, I would support and want to see that as well. Then yeah, thanks for that reminder. Yeah. Uh, I'm also in, in uh, support of the application. I was a little bit concerned at first at the uh, number of children. Uh, being requested to uh, to be looked after, but the applicant uh, does seem to have the uh, adequate background and with the uh, support of, of her friend who's going to be working, um, I, I think that she's well capable of handling that. Um, and the other issues that have been uh, brought up I, are going to be handled. Mrs. McKay, do you have any comments? Um, I'm in support. Her credentials speak for themselves and her experience. I like that there actually was a comment around an individual who had some special medical needs because it addressed a concern that is real and you don't know what the future will bring. And so that I'm, I'm glad about that. The socialization is great for children and um, I don't have a problem with the number. I think that um, this is a good thing. So I'm in full support. Okay. Uh, would, uh, would do the motion. Shaw, make the motion, please. And, and you had the, the two items. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's fine. Items. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on uh, behalf of the owners, uh, Jose Mendez and Angela Laro, uh, uh, applicant Angela Laro, uh, address 13 Alder Drive. Uh, the uh, request is uh, for special exception from the land use code section 190-47B. 
to allow a major home occupation for in uh, an in-home daycare for 12 children. This is in the R9 zone. Um, it is, again, listed in the table of uses 190-47B. Uh, the uh, does not appear to be any uh, significant uh, concerns about uh, undue traffic congestion or uh, uh, impairing pedestrian safety. Uh, there is uh, plenty of uh, area for off-street parking and uh, circulation of vehicles uh, that can be accommodated, so uh, it, it should be a little impact other than the obvious uh, extra trips that will have to occur to bring children to and from uh, the daycare. Uh, there would be no, no uh, real overloading of public water, drainage or sewer or other municipal systems. Uh, special regulations uh, are fulfilled uh, or will be fulfilled. Uh, will not impair the integrity, be out of character with the neighborhood, or be detrimental to health, morals, or welfare of residents. Again, the, uh, the, the uh, property uh, uh, meets all, all the criteria. In fact, it's uh, somewhat uh, uh, exceeds the area. Uh, Position-wise, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, it, it butts the uh, turnpike. Uh, there's already uh, uh, fencing for a, a play, a future play area in the back. And again, uh, plenty of area for parking. Uh, the our hours of operation as, uh, in, the in the application will be 7.30 to a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Uh, stipulations uh, will be that uh, no outside play before 9.30 and that there will be no parking of uh, trucks, uh, construction vehicles, or, or other uh, vehicles not uh, associated with the, the, um, the residents per se or or uh, the uh, use of the daycare. Uh, so those two stipulations uh, I, I note. Uh, so with that, I do make the motion to approve this special exception. Mr. Lineau and Mr. Shaw, prior to you completing your motion, could you ask the applicant if she Needs concurs all yes. with all of the um, special yep. conditions? I, I missed that. So Thank we you. have that on Thank the record. You. Thank you, and I, I forgot to look ahead myself. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, w will the applicant come back up just for a moment, please? Um, well, do we, we need, okay, we should, yes. Yeah, we take a, we take a public, vote to open, reopen the public hearing. hearing. Um, okay, all in favor of reopening the public hearing? Okay, motion passes. Okay, there are six special uh, conditions for uh, child care facilities, and uh, have you reviewed these? Are you familiar with them? Yes. Okay, so uh, most of these you've already uh, discussed. Uh, facility shall be subordinate to a single family detached dwelling, which it is. Um, maximum of 12 children, you've already noted. Um, the lot we've already determined is of adequate size. There's adequate on site parking. Um, you've already got the, uh, an outdoor activity uh, area that meets the conditions. The one item that, that we did not discuss is no sign shall be permitted except for a nameplate not exceeding one square foot in size and attached flat to the main structure. Do you agree to that condition? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. That's thank all. you. So the applicant has agreed to all of the special conditions for uh, this. Thank you, Mrs. McKay. You're welcome. I second yeah, thank you. Thank you for Mr. That Shaw's catch. motion on this. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So now we're back to the motion. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay. Uh, a second on the motion. Mrs. McKay second the motion. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving? That's unanimous. Four votes. And uh, the motion passes. So your your uh, your special exception is granted. There is a 30-day uh, window of appeal that if somebody wants to object, um, but so you just be aware of that, please. Okay, thank you. And if you have any questions about that, you can always contact Mr. Fong. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to um, just take something out of order. Um, we'll get back, back to the cases um, just shortly. Um, it's very rare that we've had all the members here, the full-time members, uh, together. I know, Mr. Shaw, you have to leave um, uh, in about half an hour or so. So what I'd like to do is take the first round at electing new officers for this year. Um, 
we can have that discussion and, and again the processes um, for the audience that uh, we discuss officers there's a, if there's a nomination there's a nomination and then it has to be second it has to be done again at a future meeting so I'll start off um, <clears throat> I'll serve the board in any capacity um, it doesn't really matter to me um, so um, I'm I'm ready to step down step away from being the chairman uh, or stay or in another capacity so I'm open to anything um, um, that's that's there or what I'm needed to do okay so Ms. McKay would you mind if I wanted to step up for chair that's fine I know that there's maybe some other people won't do that so what this what we're discussing okay. um, I, I know I'm willing to, to serve in, in any reasonable capacity uh, except that I would just note that I will be absent for at least six of the meetings in 2020 um, and so if that's an issue then th that should be under consideration but otherwise um, I'm open I'm not putting you on the spot I'm just asking where you I'm, guys are at I'm uh, I, I'm open for anything I don't need to step up uh, I'm fine with uh, you know you or Ms. McKay and her you know aspirations to be chair I'd <clears throat> be happy to serve as clerk or something if that was uh, needed uh, that's really all I have to say Mr. Shaw yeah and I'd, I'd prefer to just uh, it, I mean I'd serve in a in a leadership but I think again because of my work conflicts and schedule I think I would rather not this year um, so uh, definitely want to continue to serve but um, so I'm more than happy to support those of you that are either interested or willing to have uh, those 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 roles so, so Mr. Lionel I just just to reiterate what I heard I think what you're saying are you saying that you would be okay to stay as vice chair I would be okay to stay as vice chair with the understanding that that I will be absent some of the time all right um, Mr. Curry um, I've been the clerk before and I've come through around would you mind being the clerk uh, while you when you're here no not at so, all so yeah. what, what I'd like to do then um, I would I would make a motion to nominate um, my motion would be to nominate Mary Ellen as the, the chair Mr. Lionel um, as the vice chair and yourself as the clerk and I'm not forcing anybody in that position I just want to make sure that would be okay you have any I mean I'd, uh, I think that's fine uh, if you're looking for uh, second I'm, I'm, to the motion I'd I'll, let me, I'll make the motion I, before I did it I just don't want to put anybody on the spot I know we can vote but I'm just trying to uh, limit that so let me make a motion uh, for nominating um, uh, officers for the, the 2020 year I make a motion to, to uh, nominate Mary Ellen McKay as the as the chairman uh, Mr. Steve Lionel as the vice chairman and Mr. Jack Carrier as the clerk second Seconded by Mr. Shaw is there any discussion is it seeing none all those in favor Okay, that's five to nothing uh, we'll take up the vote again we're all here and the, and the next time we're here we'll take that vote up one more time and that will be twice. permanent yeah. yeah so we need to do this twice okay thank you very much yeah and maybe just for the audience sake we have to do this vote twice uh, uh, so yeah. okay thank you all right with that I'll call uh, case number three case number three is for uh, Santa Tejita Tejada three line Lion Street Sheet 19, Lot 86, requesting the following variances. One from Land Use Code Section 190-31 to encroach 14 feet into the 20-foot required front yard setback to construct a 15 by 20-foot detached pool house. And two from Land Use Code Section 190-264 to exceed maximum accessory use area, 40% permitted, 76% existing, 109% proposed. It's in the RB zone, Ward 7. Come on up, give us your name and address for the record. <coughs> Good afternoon, my name is Angel Rivera from Three Lion Street. And she's, she's Santa wait, Tejada, my wait, girlfriend. Wait, wait, don't, wait, don't, wait. Don't, don't get too close to the mic. All right, all right. Just, just, just step away from it just a little bit. Just go ahead, just, just say your name again, your address. Angel Rivera Got from close. Three Lion Street. Right. You can back up a little bit. <laughs> all right. And she's Santa Tejada, uh, also from Three Lion Street. She's my girlfriend. Okay. And uh, we are here for a variance for a pool house that we are trying to build in the house. And we were just uh, looking for a place for the, for to put up the pool furniture away in the winter and make a little bit more space for the kids. 
to have something, some out to place outside the house. We only have like a 900 square feet house, so it's kind of crowded, so <coughs> just uh, trying to build that. Okay, so uh, what, what, your property is not very deep, right? Your, no, it's right. Yeah. Your backyard, you don't have much of a backyard, correct? I know. Um, so this is kind of the only place that. Pretty, pre like pretty much because uh, uh, it, the 20 feet is pretty much where the pool starts. So I will be building the house on top of the pool. So right there, where it is right now, is like the close I can get it to the pool. Without, uh, I, I've been working in construction for 20 years, so. I was trying to avoid making any structure too close to the pool, so I don't, I don't add extra weight. I build everything with uh, two by twelves. I build my house with two by twelves, and I did my 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 um, structure with two by ten on the roof. So I uh, was just like that's the only place where I can put it. We already start building it, and we were just <coughs> trying to see, you know, what what you guys vote for that. Any questions, Mr. Lionel? I, I did notice that you've already uh, completed a, a significant construction on it, on this. Um, I assume that you applied for a building permit at some point, uh, and did, did the, the city inform you at that time that you needed a variance? Usually, that they would do. Uh, that. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't apply for for a building permit when when I started, and like you're saying, it's already I would say halfway. The structure done is it's not it's unfinished so once I finish it it will look you know uh, way nicer than like I said it's, it's not even done yet but I haven't applied for for a permit yet at what point did you become aware that you needed to apply for a variance when the town went to the house and and and, and told me about it uh, I didn't know I, I was I was I was needing a permit when it wasn't attached to the house it was more like a when I start, when in my idea I was trying to build like a gazebo, but then when I did the measurement, I ended up being, making it a little bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be. So at that point, then the, the city stopped by and told me to come here to, uh, and before I put the permit, they told me that I, I should have just get to the hearing. So that way uh, it would be okay for, for you guys so I can put the permit right beside that. So thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Mr. Curry. If, uh, kind of maybe hypothetically, if knowing that a variance is required to build it in this location, uh, you know, I site walk all of the applications. <coughs> I don't get a real good feel for your backyard because there's kind of a fence there, but is there any other location uh, that could accommodate, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a house, uh, you know, whatever the structure is. And I guess the other thing is, uh, I guess if if this were approved, is it gonna? Was your plan to finish it off so it'd be like a shed, or was it to leave it open like kind of uh, an open pool? No, uh, I, I even uh, everything gonna be uh, glass around it, so it's gonna be uh, winterized. So it's gonna be closed for the for the for the, the furniture that's in gas call. Yeah. So, pretty much everything going to be visible because I'm, I'm planning to do glass, the whole perimeter of, of, of the place. We we have a door. We already did the roof so it doesn't get wet. So pretty much it's going to be like a weather weather tight clothes. It will not just be like a like a shed. You know, like a, it will be very finished and and, and it, it, I, in my opinion, it will not uh, be something that you will drop by and you're going to look like it look unfinished. It will be something that it will. Actually, we look nice and yeah. Uh, the other question I have is, I, I'm just curious: Is there <coughs> concrete? Is there a foundation under it? Is it uh, just yes, yes. Uh, uh, there's, there's concrete in that area, and uh, the four inch were, were, were done for for the for the columns. You have a six by six columns. Uh, I believe is uh, almost every 12 feet, 12 16 feet, and yeah, it has structure. Okay, and, and yet, uh, getting back to the first question, like, if if you were aware that a variance was needed, no, I wasn't aware. Yeah, already. but I'm just saying, is there another place on your property that could accommodate, you know, this uh, thing? Not really, no, no. Yeah. Pretty much, that, that's the only 
kind of lot the way where we have the only place where we have room to build something like that. Okay. All right, and then I guess the other question I have was, was the fence present before? Yes, we've been we've been uh, living in that house in that house for eight years, and uh, we, uh, the the fence we, we did as soon we, we we bought the house back then. So the fence has always been in the same yes. location. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I guess that's it for my questions. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Which fence? Are you referring to? Is there one here? Would yeah, else like to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none. Anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, the, the, the law is very, it's not that deep, a lot. So I, I know that it appears there is no other place to put it. The, the pool on the back of the property um, um, is a nice sketch here, but. This is the sketch. Uh, you have it in black and white, but we, you, you'd be, no matter where this is, we would be, it would, would need a variance. Um, notwithstanding the fact that we we started the construction, and um, like I said, I honestly believe that the applicant probably didn't even know he needed to do something. But you know, um, but he's here now. Um, so the other side's a driveway, I, you know. So it's not nothing near the pool. So. I, I kind of like this, kind of like it. I prefer this better because what he's explaining, this is not like a, just like a shed that's gonna be like on the front lawn. It's actually gonna be glass and, and so to me it has that like see-through effect type, type thing. So something um, nice, right? So it's not like this eyesore type of a thing or just this monstrosity with, with stuff in it. So. So that, that's up. so. Mr. Lino. I'm having trouble with this. Um, when I drove by, it, it, the, uh, it looked very uh, obtrusive in that this uh, construction kind of jutted out from in front of the house, uh, very close to the street. Looking at the photographs, uh, the, uh, I guess it's from the, the, the city GIS map, I don't see that fence um, present um, in there. It looked to me as if it was newly constructed. Um, the, the prop, the GIS, this map right here, the, yeah. the house, I, I can see the fence, I, I like this the white fence line. Is present, uh, There's the what little white line there. Well, but that that's not where it, it shows. The white line right there. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it, yeah. That's how far it comes up. Yeah. It's only six feet off. Yeah. yeah. I, I always take issue with projects that are mostly done, and then they said, oh, gee, I needed a building permit for this. Um, but I'll wait to see what other <coughs> board members have to say. Mr. Uh, McCarroll. Well, I, I'm not voting on this one, but um, for, for me, the struggle really is, you know, what are the special conditions of the property? When, when I look at the lot itself, it doesn't seem distinct from other ones in the neighborhood. It's very regularly shaped. It's about the same size. These are smaller lots in this neighborhood, but the fact that there's a lot going on on the property, that there is a pool, you know, to me, doesn't, doesn't create hardship uh, the structure that's proposed is really rather large there's an existing shed on the property that existing shed if it's not large enough could potentially be enlarged um, but I also just note to the application itself uh, when you look at five special conditions exist that literal enforcement of the ordinance results in unnecessary hardship the response is there is not any special conditions existing of the property but I have it built already and will have to take it down if not approved and I don't see that as being justification for purchase. Sure. Uh, I feel the uh, same way as uh, uh, Mr. Mancara. Uh, uh, I, I st uh, struggle with a, f a front yard encroachment. I mean, when you drive around the neighborhood, you know, I, I, in a way, because it looks like it could be a nice, I 
think it'll be, if, if it were completed, a very nice structure. As I drive in the neighborhood, I'm, I, don't, I don't see anything like that. You know, I was almost trying to find something that I could <coughs> say this is a bit of in character in the neighborhood, but, but I don't, you know, and it is a bit camouflage from, with the front fence, but I, I, I don't see that as a, a justification to allow such a f large front yard encroachment, and I, I don't find any special conditions on the property just sticking to the letter of the law, as Mr. Mancara always does. So I'm struggling with it. Uh, you know, I feel free to convince me I'm, you know, seeing it wrong, but I, I, I struggle to find uh, support the application. I don't think the uh, hardship is there. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I think I'm at a similar spot. I mean, I, I always, I mean, I, I think it's always, it's frustrating in a way with these ones where there's something that already is happening and we're dealing with maybe having to undo construction or remove something. But, I mean, Mr. McCarr made a you know, really good point, but also I try to look at these and still really ask, like, what would I have done if the structure wasn't now pre-existing and would I be in support of this? And I, I, I just, I don't see that as being, this is, this is really imposing. I mean, I was encouraged by, you know, the glass enclosure, and I agree with the point you made earlier, Mr. Boucher, that I think that might help a lot in terms of less imposition ultimately or that feel, but we're still talking about something that's only six feet off the property line, and in this case, it appears to be one of those situations where it's not even like there's a lot of extra city right away where really the property is by feel set back further. <coughs> this time it looks like it's pretty much that six feet or, or not much different than that. So um, I, you know, there's part of me just, you know, kind of uh, would, would like to feel like I could support this, but I don't think the justification's there and I don't think I would have supported it if it were just presented as, as an initial proposal. So I think that's where I'm at. I, I agree with you. Um, I think the scale, I, and again, uh, the idea with the glass, that's why I brought it up, was that the idea. I think if the scale was very different, um, maybe I'd find some support for it, but but I unfortunately can't find support for this. This is just just way too intrusive, um, too big. So, um, you know, and I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't want, we don't wanna sit here and design the, 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 the thing for them. So, um, so, and again, maybe I'm going off on a tangent. My, my question is always trying to do the best that we can as a board and also do the best we can for, for our, you know, the applicants and helping them. So um, I know I've said this before and I, I, my, you know, my idea is, you know, do we um, give the applicant an opportunity to come back with something different and see if um, that's the case? But again, I'm not doing this so that we uh, approve something smaller. I don't even know if that's really where we want to go with this or um, just vote on the case as it is. Mr. Lano. Um, <clears throat> to me, something smaller isn't necessarily going to help. I, the, I, Mr. Falk, do you have any information about that fence? Because uh, clearly a variance would have been needed to put, to put up that fence so close to the property line, right? In the well, front? Actually, there's no setback for fences as long as they don't exceed six feet in height they can go anywhere on your property oh, yeah okay i suppose so unless it's a corner lot and it's impeding or um, right. blocking uh, vehicular lines, yeah. views yeah. as you pull up to a right. corner all right all right mr shaw i i mean i i would be open to you know seeing if the applicant wants to you know reconsider a smaller scale i, st I also i know without i appreciate your point about not wanting to get into like designing things but you know and mr mccarr noted there is an existing shed back there i don't think there's anywhere anywhere they can go any depth wise because that's already looks like it's probably pretty much at the end of the property but maybe that space you know that if it was just to be extended made a longer shed i i don't know but uh, you know or just simply something that might scale this back uh, so uh, I, I'm not saying that I really know if I could 
you know, ultimately, you know, support even a scale back. But, you know, if it is able to be brought back so the encroachment is not as significant, I think that at least, you know, uh, you know, might be a little bit easier to deal with it. You know, it, it might be hard to get it back to, you know, where the kind of front facade is of the existing house. But maybe if it's only a couple feet different than that, it might have less of a feel of this is the one thing when you kind of look down kind of the, you know, I know it's not a long street. You really just have a couple houses on either side. So, but even that kind of sense of the general sight line, I think that's oftentimes I think the kind of thing where if you don't have something that's significantly different, uh, it's much more, I think, visually, you know, reasonable. So, so I guess in those senses, uh, I don't know, you know, what, what the applicant might be interested or willing to, you know, look, look at, but I would be open to giving them that opportunity. Mr. Curry. I mean, I'm open to your suggestion. My, my inclination, uh, slight preference would be to, to just vote on it as it is. Uh, it, you know, the uh, Fisher v. Dover leaves the opportunity that if there's a, what the board defines as a significant redesign, then that's a different application. So, uh, so I have a slight preference to just vote on it, but I, I'd go either way. We haven't, I don't think we've heard from Ms. McKay. Yes, I'm sorry, Ms. McKay's been very quiet. <laughs> You're practicing being a new uh, role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not inclined to see somebody take down something they've already put up, and so I'm, I struggle with that piece of it. I would be inclined if they want to scale it back a little bit, um, sure. I. I guess I don't have the um, the bandwidth to to have it taken down. That's that's my whole issue. Um, but I don't know. There's no other place for it to go uh, other than maybe it does get scaled back. Uh, maybe that's it, and maybe we do do that, but. I'm on the horns of a dilemma, and so that's why I'm so quiet. And, and again, I just brought that up because I know that even a scale back doesn't mean anything because it still may be um, not, not possible. So ha having listened to the discussion, I, I think I'd rather more support uh, Mr. Curry's position uh, because if, if it's going to be something different, it's going to be something I'm not saying it, anything will be the same board that's here, but I think for myself, if it's something completely different and more way scaled back, I think I would consider it as a different application. So I, I would be more inclined to follow uh, Mr. Curry's, Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I, I think I can be okay with that too, because I think to really get it to something that I think I'm likely to approve, and maybe even if I try to project that as far as the rest of the opinion stated already, I do think it has to go from something that's more of a a minor adjustment or, you know, that, that tweaking to something that's got greater significance where I, I would think it would pass the Fisher v. Dover kind of concept as far as it would be a, a major change or something different enough that we would be inclined to, to look at that and not consider it to be the same application, so. Yeah, I, I would consider that. I think that's a fair compromise, very fair. I also agree. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? I'll do it. Okay. So, <clears throat> which motion do we want to make? All right. But all right. Well, we're going to make a motion to deny. To yeah. deny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll take them together. We'll take them together. Both together. Yes, we're going to take both variance requests together. Uh, Make a motion on behalf of uh, the owner, Santa Tejeda, uh, 3 Lion Street, sheet 19, lot 86, <coughs> requests the following variances. Number one, from land use code section 190-31 to encroach 14 feet into the 20-foot required front yard setback to construct a 15-foot by 20-foot detached pool house, and two, from land use code section 190 dash 264 to exceed maximum accessory use area 40 percent permitted 76 percent existing 109 percent proposed 
This is in the RB zone, Ward 7. The board feels that the variance uh, it would not be appropriate uh, given the, uh, there are uh, insufficient special conditions of the property uh, for the benefit sought by the applicant. Uh, and uh, there may be some other reasonable method that they can uh, apply to, to get what, uh, some of what they want. Uh, the board does not believe this is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Um, although we have no testimony, there is some concern that the uh, obtrusive nature of this building uh, above the fence will adversely affect the property values of surrounding parcels. Um, the board is concerned that it is contrary to public interest. Uh, substantial justice to the applicant would be served, but uh, I make a motion to deny the application. Second by Mr. Shaw. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor to deny the application? That's five to nothing. Sorry, sir, your application has been denied. Um, you can call Mr. Falk um, uh, anytime after tomorrow, and he can let you know what your options are going forward. All right, have, thank you for coming. With that, I'll close case number three. You to take a break. Yeah, and, I'll, and I have to excuse myself due to a work commitment. All right, so. else need to take a break right now? Can we take a couple minutes so I can? We'll take a five minute break.
space, 35 percent required, 33 percent proposed in the RV zone, what three. Welcome, and just give us your name and address, please. Uh, Al Monaco, 39 Amherst Street, and I'm here to make my driveway bigger. So uh, originally it was, uh, it was already about 30-ish feet wide up towards the house. I put a garage on and then tried to meet the requirements by being the t with the 24-foot curb cut. And when I did, the edge of the road got cut up. So it is, I did repave it already. The binder coat is down and it's uh, 30 feet, goes down to the 24 feet and then goes out to 40 feet. The problem that I have is the 40 feet is too close to the uh, artillery lane. It needs to be back further. So where the structure is, the corner of the structure would be about two feet off of there so that you wouldn't be able to drive on it. Um, so I'm here and I'm requesting it to be 40 feet wide because originally I tried to meet the requirements and you know, I, I, it's paved and I didn't it didn't meet your requirements, so now I'm here to do a variance just to get the full 40 foot, foot width. Because I think it obviously it'll look a lot better and it'll be a lot more serviceable. Because now it's just like there's a big area that's just stone that's kind of like unmanageable property. Um, so I don't know if you all have a, a copy of the actual what I wrote in the, the grievance application. Um, you know, really under the special conditions, um, the property, the way it's laid out, which I'm sure you're all familiar with that area, it can be really busy. So you can't, can't be parking in the street a lot of times in the good weather anyways. And if I were to make that 24 foot wide and then lose the side driveway, I'd have only have no place, I would have no place to park. Um, and where that meets, if I back up to that driveway, I pull up to that, I'm sorry, to the garage, I'm in the, that corner of the street, that's a fire, a fire lane. So I've actually, before this was done, I've parked out there before, and I've been on my own grass, well, not my own grass, the grass up to the driveway and have gotten tickets. So I know not to park there anymore. Um, I think, uh, you know, as far as safety goes, we're pulling in and out of the driveway a lot. Um, I work off hours and my girlfriend works off hours, so we're coming and going constantly. I have a second job where I'm get home from one job, head out to the next one, um, and just pulling in and out of the garage and pulling up to the garage door is a matter of like, Hey, can I got to move your car? Can you move your, you know, it just gets to be a hassle. <coughs> and where the kids are heading back and forth to school, they walk up that road during school hours. So you, whenever you're pulling in out of that driveway, you, you can't really be in a rush of moving a bunch of cars around. So I think it'd be a lot safer if it was wider. You'd have enough room to fit in the driveway. Um, And as far as like the, the rest of the neighborhood, aesthetically, it's, it looks better already um, the way that it, that it is, but um, the abutting property has a 40 foot one wide, a 41 foot, I believe. It's on, um, I don't know what, the, I think that's number 10 artillery, where I'm 39, I believe they changed their address. That's a 41 foot curb cut. Um, I don't know if you, do you have those pictures? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, and that, what I'm requesting, my driveway would just touch the corner of his driveway. Uh, it doesn't affect any of the drainage. It actually improves the drainage. Um, I brought the elevation up when I backfilled about one foot in a 40 foot span to get the water to run away to that, uh, whatever is that, the, the drainage or catch basin that's out there across the street. As, prior to that, all the water was flooding at the corner, uh, getting stuck at the corner of the driveway. And there's a manhole cover that they actually dug up. If you look at that aerial view, that manhole cover over the summer 
has been deteriorating over time and it's sinking because of that water that's sitting there. So by raising that up, that pushes the water away. It's not dramatic change, it was just enough to get the water to shed away properly. Um, also, if you look, I'm not sure who owns the property um, to the right of 10 Artillery. There's a little parking spot there. I didn't go over and measure that, but that's fairly wide too. That doesn't meet the 24 foot requirement. And if you look at 30, uh, hold on. Number 43, they're meet a 36 foot, uh, they have a 36 foot curb cut as well. It looks a lot longer because the driveway next to it, where they're, pro I don't know if it's their property line, but where the seam is, where the pavement is, it looks longer than 36, but from pavement line to pavement line, they have 36 feet. Um, so that's why I'm here. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Mr. Carrillo. Um, when I took a look at your place, you know, it looks like there's new asphalt there. Yes, sir. And as you're looking, you know, on an artil artillery lane, which I've actually never driven on before until oh. I went to see your place, uh, like the asphalt off the street, it kind of curves to the left. Uh, which is what it was at least a week ago anyway. I probably yep. stayed yes, sir. Yep. It, if with the way it's paved now is that the 41 foot curb cut or are you looking to fill in that patch or if you want to call it that to the street that's now dirt yes i'm looking to i'm looking to fill in that well, exactly what you're talking about there's just uh some inch and a half drainage rock there okay. that's what you're talking about sir yeah on the left uh yeah i want to fill that in so it's it's uh pave so it's all pavement okay and so what is the curb cut now Thir 30 feet and and that would be another 10 feet you'd be what you want to fill in there yes sir it's uh or 11 um, feet i guess i'm sorry what is it now 30 to it's 30 feet and it fans into 24 like i said when i did it i tried to meet the requirement now, i'm not make excuse but when we cut the curb it didn't it was all crooked so that fresh pavement was was done that way because it kept breaking apart and it looked terrible. So that's why it goes down to the 24. It's not like I just made the driveway to 30 feet, if that makes sense. Uh, but so it, like back, if you go back to where the front of the garage is. Yes, sir. You got, how wide's the garage? Uh, it's 23 feet. 23, and then there's like a parking spot, you know, it's gotta be another 12 feet or so on the left of that that's asphalt. Uh, like. Yeah. If you're at the, if you're standing right at your garage door, yes. how much to the left is that asphalt go over? That goes, uh, that's an additional 17 feet wide. Okay, so that's almost too, too wide. All right, so it's 23 and 17, was that? It's 40 is what he's looking for, it's 40. Okay. Yeah. The widest pot, sir, is 40. 40, If yeah. you go from one corner of the garage to the additional parking, yeah. and I have it at 40 feet, or that 17 feet, just because aesthetically, it matches the line. If you look up, there's a set of stairs I put going under the porch and they're centered. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of wanted it to all be aesthetically kind of pleasing, make it look proper as opposed to it just kind of, it doesn't look right right now. The way it's, it's curved and it's just not as, as tidy as it could be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mancara. You mentioned earlier, and maybe I didn't quite understand correctly, what you, you said if you park in front of the garage, you get a ticket? Prior to building the garage, there was just a, there's a, in that aerial view you can see before the garage was up, if you were to park, if you um, look to the, the corner of uh, what I believe is considered 14 R. Uh, artillery and 10 artillery if you go to the corner of 14 artillery right there there's grass there and if you're parked say perpendicular like you're on the right or parallel with the road but perpendicular to the house if you're parked right there 
that's considered a fire lane. Okay. So with the garage being there, if I park across the front of the driveway, I'm essentially, or not the driveway, it's still the city right away, but where it would be coming out, it's still city property. If I'm parked in there, I still have the potential to get a, to get a uh, ticket for being in a fire lane. So if you park in front of your current garage, you're still in the right of way? Yeah, no, I'm still, I'm good. I have... Uh, you got 12 feet. I got 12 feet, yeah. I, I don't really, I wouldn't put my truck there, but I could park something small probably across there. It would just be, I'd have to park across it and drive on the lawn and block the front door. So there is room to be off of the road, but... I don't think I'm answering your question. So, so, oh, right. so I, Mr. McCarr, I think Mr. Falk has an explanation. Is a swale area that he in front of that garage in the street. Right? Yeah, between the garage and the property line, it's only 12 feet. So if you know, if his truck is parked there, his truck is going to be almost. He's got a big truck. It's going to be halfway into the, the right of way. It does a large swale area there. If you look, um, yeah, I, I no, I get that. What I'm saying is that uh, the garage is 12 feet back from artillery lane. So if you are parked perpendicular to the street facing the garage, part of your vehicles, uh, the vehicles that are parked in front of the garage will always be in the public right of way. Probably. Yeah. There's very that, little. That was room. my question. That's why he has the, the driveway on the side of the garage so he can park without getting a ticket in his own right. property. And, and if I could just have another question, when was the garage yeah. built? Uh, this year, I'm still in the process. It's almost buttoned up now. I have the permits and he has a permit all the it, everything's I'm not, I'm not exactly. Exactly. Okay. This really explains Mr. Um, explains how how many well. vehicles do that really explains do you have right there. your your household? Uh there's there's uh we have a total of four vehicles, but there's two of us living there, but my daughter comes with her granddaughter too, so um I have an extra vehicle and motorcycle, so they come and go all the time. But uh, like I said, there is typically between my daughter coming, bringing the granddaughter, and my girlfriend coming and going. And like I, we work off hours, so we're it's pretty busy getting in and out of the house. Yeah, I, you notice your your garage is is deeper than than normal. I mean, Thirty eight feet is pretty deep for a garage. It is 38 feet, but I had to retain the existing structure. So it's 38 feet attached, but I'm losing five feet because the way the house was originally designed, it was on stone and then brick. So I couldn't undermine the gable end of the house. So I have a five foot retaining wall actually in the garage with a set of stairs that go up. So it's 32, uh, 33 feet deep. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? None? Thank you. Anybody else like to speak in favor of this application? Yeah, that's, 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 he's a neighbor. So we have one email that came in <coughs> in support. Uh, to, to whom may concern, the 24-foot driveway opening is perfectly fine. Uh, it's this. not in support. It's in no, it's not in support. I'm sorry. All right, so. Um, Anybody else would like to speak in favor? All right, seeing none. Um, those are questions. Questions are opposition. I'll read the letter in first. Um, this is an opposition. To whom may concern the 24-foot driveway opening is perfectly fine for this garage that he has. It that he has. It is a residential neighborhood. As you can see in the picture, there's plenty of room to park a vehicle in front of the garage. I think the 40-foot opening is very unnecessary. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I'm not sure where Mr. Brown. Uh, with so what address that is. So, I yeah. think it's next door at 10, okay. but I'm not positive. Next door to number 10, maybe? Okay. Um, anybody else like to speak in, with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Seeing none, I'll close the public. Oh, we'll re rebuttal. Oh, he can, um, he can rebuttal. sir, I'm sorry. This letter, I don't know, Mr. Rump, but you have five minutes to talk and to speak in rebuttal, if you like. Okay. Uh, Al, Al Monaco, 39 Amherst Street. Right. Um, uh, I know who wrote the letter. Uh, this is my neighbor. It'd be at uh, 10 Artillery, and he has a 41-foot curb cut, and 
two sizable trucks and I'm not complaining about his driveway. Uh, I need more room and I'd be parked in front of the driveway. I'd be, I mean, in front of the garage, it would be a nuisance to come and go. It could be a safety issue during school hours or sporting events. And I think that it's aesthetically pleasing to the neighborhood. I've already made it look, it looks good already. So it's going to just look better. It's not like I'm going to try and half step and do the wrong thing. It's going to look, it's going to look nice. And I think obviously be a lot safer if I can pull in on the side of the driveway on a regular basis, on the side of the uh, garage rather. Okay, any questions? You all, you all set? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, with that, I'll close the um, public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Curry? Um, You know, at first I was, I was on the fence on this application. I mean, 41 was a lot. It's 40. Is a lot. 40? 40? 40, 41 next door. 41, yeah, I'm sorry. It's so 40. 40. Yeah. But, you know, I'd never been on artillery lane, and not only next door there to me there's several other properties that may not have a paved driveway but the the people are using the full width of it uh y y you know the, the back of their house along there so I, I just wanted to note that or my observation was that this if this were filled in it wouldn't be an outlier it would almost look more like the norm around that that area um, another I'd be kind of subjective observation here is I, I think the the garage the stonework is quite a step up you know in, in a nice looking situation while some of the other properties you know are you know there's a lot of rutted dirt and stuff like that and and I, I take that into consideration that you know I think the owner <coughs> is trying to up the game of the property here and has done so um, I guess another factor is I've never been on artillery lane like I said but I, you know I hear it fills up readily with all the, the events and that does make it a, a particular challenge uh, for the homeowners there to, to come and go so I, I I'm, I'm inclined to support this uh, looking for some other opinions uh, that's where I'm at um, I'm in support of the application. Um, I've been on Tillery Lane in a lot of years, but I remember years and years ago going down Tillery Lane, one lane, trying to squeeze by. It's probably when they allow parking both sides, um, so I know it's tight. Um, you know, special conditions of the property. Again, this is a house that I always believe, I always thought, you know, the front door's on Amherst Street, but I know it's, you know, it's how you look at the house. Um, so parking is really only available on the back side. And, and again, what they're facing is um, city property. So it's not more houses on that side where it's in conflict with a lot more um, people coming and going from their homes on the other side of the street. Um, so again, I, and I also think that the applicant's gone a little further to try to, you know, make it aesthetically pleasing and, and fix maybe some things that he didn't have to fix. But uh, again, uh, for the reasons that uh, you stated um, and the applicant stated, um, I, I support the application. Mr. Lino. When I first saw this, I, <clears throat> what I saw was <coughs> somebody who didn't understand, uh, to me, didn't understand what the, the ordinance is called for and, uh, and did that swoop where it, you know, well, no, the, tr the curb cut isn't, tw isn't more than 24 feet. Well, it's like 30 feet, he said, but, um, and then it expands out. And I, I see that done a lot. People just don't understand that's not the way it's supposed to work. So I was, I was kind of tilted against it, but you know, hearing more about it and, and looking at what's going on around it, I can, I can sort of understand it, and I, I think that it makes sense. So I'm, I kind of tilt on in support of it. I'm not enthusiastic, but okay. I, I'm probably in the same place. Um, I, it's true that there are other properties in the area with extra wide driveways, uh, some paved, some not paved. Actually, the not paved might not look as nice, but it also isn't you know, uh, creating an impervious surface. So from a drainage point of view, that's better. 
Um, uh, although I have to say, my, my concern would be um, you know, I wouldn't want to see all of the properties abutting the park with 40 foot wide paved driveways, uh, particularly when the lots are 50 some feet wide, you're talking about parking lot all the way around it. And I don't know that that's what the ordinance contemplated. I, I, I could get there with this though, I think for, for a, a couple of reasons. One, the, the right of way on artillery is unusually wide. And, and I do think that that's a special condition that does impact the properties. I don't think most people realize how wide that right of way really is. They think it's their property and it's not. Um, and also, I, I think artillery in, in, in itself uh, creates a special condition in that, uh, you know, the applicant's right. This, this is, you know, I live in this neighborhood. Um, most people, um, most people, certainly who have driveways that are compliant and, and multiple vehicles have to do the juggle, you know, of the vehicles periodically. I know we certainly do. And the way you accommodate that is usually by parking some on the street, you know, at least part of the time. And an artillery drive, particularly uh, in the warmer weather, that's very challenging to do because it is lined with parking. Because basically what you've got across the street is a major, major sports fields that are used pretty heavily all year round. And then you've got home and stadium. So that's how I get there. And that I really do think that it is these other factors, less on the property, but what's happening in that immediate neighborhood that create the special conditions on the property. So I would support the application for that reason. Okay. I too support the application and it is as Mr. McHara said it's my neighborhood um, and I understand the parking issue because that'll happen on Cortland Street as well and people are taking the parking on their front lawns because you'll get ticketed um, I've been in my property since 1988 and so I have um, I've, I've seen that uh, and when you go down there in artillery, you're right, people assume it's their property, it's not, and they're getting ticketed uh, for parking on what they assume is a safer place to park. So I think aesthetically this looks really well. Um, I understand even the size of the garage because of having a large truck. I have a son who did the exact same thing because of the size of his truck. and it makes logical common sense. So I am in support of this. Mr. Curry, you like to make a motion? Yeah, make a motion. Okay, great, thank you. I make a motion on behalf of Albert Monaco at 39 Amherst Street. Uh, there's two area uh, requests before us. One is to exceed maximum driveway width. 24 feet is allowed, 40 feet is requested. Uh, actually, there's three, I'm sorry. The second is to exceed 50% of front yard paved. 66% is proposed in this application, and the third is uh, for minimum open space, 35% required, 33% proposed. I think the board finds that a variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property, given the special conditions of the property, which we discussed uh, quite a bit tonight, the extra wide uh, right of way on uh, artillery lane, uh, the fact that it's adjacent to city owned land, ball fields that are heavily used in the summer makes parking particularly challenging and also that this, th these row of homes have no parking on the front and all the parking is on the back. And given those special conditions, I think the board finds that uh, it's reasonable for this 40 foot request. I, I guess just one other condition to throw out here on the, uh, on the motion is that there's other uh, driveways close by that <coughs> are uh, probably a large or as large, large or larger than this. So the board finds that this request is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. I think the board finds it'll not make any impact on surrounding parcels. I think the board finds it's not contrary to public interest and substantial justice to the landowner is served. So I make a motion to approve these three variances as requested. Seconded by Ms. McKay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's five to nothing. Congratulations, your motion passes. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. With that, I'll close case number four.
somewhere else. All right, next on the agenda, um, there are two rehearing requests um, that we can um, attend to now. Um, the first rehearing request, I'll read into the record. It's for owner Savcam LLC, New Hampshire, number one rule. Cellular Incorporated, requester of the rehearing is PRA Properties LP. Case address is L Silver Drive. Rehearing request from 11 12 19 public hearing. Staff Cam LLC owner, New Hampshire number one rule, Cellular Incorporated, applicant L Silver Drive. Sheet A, lot 993, requesting the following special exception from the land use code section 190 15, table 15 1, number 276 to construct a 130-foot-tall monopole communication tower with an associated service truck containing radio equipment and the following variances. One, from land use code, land use code section 190-38, section C subsection 1 to allow a setback of 23 feet 8 inches to the nearest property line, 400 feet required. And two, from land use code section 190-38, section C subsection 2 to allow a tower within one mile of the existing tower. It's in the GB zone, Ward 7. Okay, so we have the re hearing request in front of you. Um, as usual, we'll there are four questions that we have to answer, um, and we'll go through those. Uh, is there any discussion um, that anybody would like to have before we start? Um, no? I trust everybody has the rehearing request from um, the abutter. And there was also um, two other um, pieces of correspondence, one from the law office of Stephen Grill and one from Princeton Properties. So I, I think they were, may have been on your desk, on your table. So, okay. Right. So everybody has everything. So is everybody ready to get started? Okay, so we're going to go through our process. We'll, we'll, we'll ask each question and go around and I might oh. want to mention to the audience that there is no audience participation in this. Yeah, so this is just a procedure that, that the board follows. And again, this is not um, a public hearing. This is a part of our public meeting. So in this case, um, the first question is, was there any procedural error, which includes improper notice, denying someone the right to be heard, et cetera? Mr. Carrier? Well, uh, I think in the rehearing, the first rehearing request from the abutter, there's a, a claim that there was improper notice. It's paragraph B. Uh, so I'd just like to throw that out, that, there, that the, the uh, rehearing request, you know, specifically says that in paragraph B. Um, I, since we're getting right into it I say I believe that proper notices were provided uh, Mr. Falk provided uh, uh, the, the I guess you'd say the communities that were notified uh, do you want to speak to what do you call that notice we well it's uh, a state law that you have to notify all the towns and municipalities within a 20 mile radius and there's a, a list of about um, 30 or so towns that we did notify and um, that's one of the first things we did in this case. Or any T tower, we notify all the towns nearby. And it's all always sent to the town clerk's office. So I, I, I can attest that that was done. So uh, my point of view on this is I wasn't here at the original hearing. So my opinion here is based on reading the minutes uh, and this rehearing request and also the response to that by Mr. Grill in the response to the response, uh, might by, you might say by Prince and Properties, but I feel that there, there was no procedural error, that the notice was proper and no one was denied the right to be heard. My opinion on question number one. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Mr. Lionel? Um, I uh, agree there was no error. Mr. McCarran? I agree. Mrs. McKay? I agree. I also agree. Second question is was it an illegal decision in other words did the board fail to completely address each of the points of law required for the special exception and or variance mr Curry. well i think uh 
in the original request uh, by the abutter, the, their paragraph A uh, speaks to uh, an illegal decision, or, or maybe I would say the board failed to completely address uh, the fact that it was uh, an exception. Uh, however, on that paragraph A, uh, kind of like uh, Mr. Grill says in, in their response, uh, you know, the request was for a special exception in two variances, and that's what was posted, and that's what was heard and voted upon. So I, I feel that that was thorough. Thank you. Ms. Lano? Um, it was not an illegal decision. Mr. McCarra? I agree, although if I, I, I may have a question for Mr. Falk. Sure, go ahead. Um, w would it be your interpretation of the ordinance that um, the requests for variances were in, in effect the same as the board granting a waiver from the requirements of the section? Um, I, the language in the ordinance specifically says the word waiver, not the word variance. I, I think it was properly advertised and properly deliberated by this board. The special exceptions for the use, that, that's, that's a given. The other two issues were dimensional, and dimensional issues receive, or they have to ask for variances before this board. One was the, the, the setback has to be at least 400 feet, they were about <laughs> 25, that's a dimensional variance. The other variance was that you can't have a tower within one mile radius of another tower. And this one was within a mile of the, the tower that actually that they're replacing. But even though it's still there, it's still a tower. So we think that that was properly executed by this board, the special exception for the use and the variances for the dimensional issues. There have been many other T towers in the city, and that's been a consistent ruling by our staff and testimony by the board that, you know, it's a special exception for the use and anything that doesn't get met dimensionally is a, is a variance. The planning board may do waivers. I've been on this board for 21 years. I've never seen or heard or ever seen the board mention the word waiver except for an equitable waiver, and that's a whole different type of a land use issue. So I, I would say I, I concur. Uh, there, there was no illegal decision on the basis of the input we received from the zoning administrator. One other point that, you know, I, I think touch it, this question touches on is the idea of a temporary versus a permanent um, <coughs> variant. So this is clearly a request for temporary, and that's what I think the board feels it granted was an 18-month temporary uh, variance. Now, yes, we all go to the training. Uh, I feel we all know that a variance runs with the land and by definition is in perpetuity. If you look at the history of this board or myself, there have been, you know, and I voted for temporary things, temporary variances, you know, and so a literal interpretation of the hardship and perpetuity doesn't accommodate <coughs> temporary. I, I get that, I hear that, and that's spoken to loudly in the rehearing request. But I also feel that uh, a board doesn't have to take a literal, a, a literal interpretation of, of, that and of that rule about perpetuity. And I think that if, if we weren't permitted to have a temporary condition, so this could only be in perpetuity, I, I couldn't vote in favor of this, and I think the board did make a wrong decision. But I think we have the ability for that temporary situation. I mean, that could be reversed in court, and I'd say, okay, we can't do that or do that anymore. But I, I think the temporary aspect is reasonable for us to speak to, so I don't think that that's an illegal decision. Could that be overturned? by a court, perhaps, but I don't think so. I think it's a reasonable interpretation. That's my opinion on that. Well, if I could just follow up on that, at the risk of going out of turn, um, it, it, it was a temporary use that was requested. So that was what was requested of the board. Uh, so 
uh, it, the board, it wasn't for the board to make a different decision. That was the request. Now, and, and I think the board members felt that if it had been a uh, request for a permanent tower, it would have been denied. Um, Mr. Falk, uh, I was just going to say the applicant uh, did say that it would be 18 months at the, the longest time. They, they'd hoped to get something erected even sooner than that, but the board did grant the 18 month uh, time limit. And the board does have the ability to have stipulations put on approvals as long as they're reasonable and they're agreed upon. And the applicant, they mentioned it first, and that was in their application, as Mr. Mancaro said. And that, that's, I believe that was a reasonable accommodation and a reasonable interpretation and stipulation. So. And just another point on temporary, like the, the, the variance for the tower within a mile of the other tower, I mean, that that's a tower that's coming down. So like as the original application says, or maybe it was Mr. Grill's you know, response, I mean, not that it wasn't lost on me, but that overlap was you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. So the whole thing to me, the temporary is, is reasonable. Thank you. Ms. McKay. Well, just the question is whether it was an illegal decision. No. Um, I'm also, no, it's not a legal decision. Does the request for rehearing contain any new information not presented or available to the board at the original public hearing? Ms. Salino? Um, it does not contain anything substantive. Mr. Carter. Um, the, uh, the the only thing I there is something new I don't know if it's substantial and I'd like to speak to that which is you know the, the tower is extremely visible to, to the apartments now in, in going and looking at it which I was surprised it was up I mean I kind of thought somebody would wait to the 30-day timeout period the thing is there you know and uh, nobody said not to drive into the apartment so I kind of went up the hill and looked at it from different angles and yeah, you really see it. I mean, there's no denying that. You know, it's a bit of a shock factor that it's up there, but you know, you, you go look at the numbers and you, you know, the in the rehearing request it talked about 30 or 40 foot trees, and in the application it said it was 50 to 60 foot trees. Even if it's 60 foot trees, it's a 130 foot tower. So maybe maybe I shouldn't have been surprised to see the tower towering above the trees. Uh, you, you know, I, the balloon test picture, uh, it, it just didn't look like it was going to be very high. Uh, so I guess I, I concur that it's, <coughs> it's a high-looking high pole, and it's a, it's a, t to me that would be a visual nuisance to the, to the abutters. But so, and, and that's what the rehearing speaks to in part. But so, so maybe that's new now that it's in, but I don't know if... I don't think that would uh, change my mind on anything. That's the information that was there before us, and it's a temporary structure. So I, I want to point out it's new. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a shock to see that when it wasn't there, but it is temporary. And uh, so it, it wouldn't cause me to change my mind on it. I also. Um, I, I, I take your point. I, I, I do believe I recall some discussion or some comment made about that. I think it was clear to me that, yes, that people living uh, in, in the complex would definitely see it more than, in, than if you were down below, again, because of the tree line. And I, I guess, for me, I understood that it would be above the trees. Um, so I, for me, in this case here, I, I don't find anything really new that I didn't believe uh, as, as in regards to the to the height of the tower for me the dimensions were given always the heights of the tree you mentioned it yourself the height of the tower I think the shock value was actually seeing it but there was never anything not spoken about the size of something so it's in my mind, not new. The only thing new is actually seeing it there, but that's new. 
and it's going to be new because that's what they asked to have happen temporarily. So do I think that there's anything that substantially changes this? No. I would agree. Okay, so that's a no. Okay. And the last question, uh, is there anything which would or could cause the board to make a different decision? Mr. Curry. Um, I guess my short answer is no, but there is a point I, I wanted to speak to. Again, not having been at that meeting, you know, in the minutes there was discussion about where else did you look? And, and the applicant had stated that they had looked looked around and, th and this was all they could find. I guess, you know, uh, in, in hindsight, uh, and uh, you know, for, for the point of the discussion here, I, 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 if I was there, I wish I could ask, well, who are the properties? Just, gi just give us a written, give me a written list of, of those places you went to look at. I, I just, I take that testimony for face value. Some, you know, I, in the rehearing request, it kind of it makes it sound like hey, I just found the first place that's open and grabbed it. I I don't know if I, I don't think that was the case, but you know you look around the neighborhood, and there's plenty of portions of parking lots that I never see filled up, like the market basket at the far end over by the bank. Even on a Saturday before Christmas or Thanksgiving, I don't see that corner ever filled up. And then a little bit further down to the south. You know, and I think, well, gee, this is this is like a compact site, right? You got this fence, you know, with the truck fenced in, tower, boom, in this kind of small area. And I would think that could be put in in many different corners of parking lots, and it and it's in this one, which is right next to the the apartments. You know, at least I least best case for this apartment complex. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I take for face value when the applicant says they, they, they looked exhaustively around. Uh, and I, I guess I just leave it, at, leave it at that. If there was, I was just curious if there was more to the discussion. There, there was testimony the to that. Um, and they had looked at several pieces. I don't know the exact number, but and I, I think that the answer was that um, most of it, some of it was unavailable. Um, I did even broach the subject of, of course, Fezzley Mall is a Big, big complex, but um, parts of the mall are in Tingsboro, and this tower has to be located in New Hampshire. It's, can, you know, it's not a Massachusetts thing. So there was there was these discussions that went back and forth, and and, and those that were there can expound on that. But I think that that we, we did ask that question. I think I asked that question, like what what else was available, and I think they answered. They I I know they answered it to my satisfaction. So on this question, I don't think. For me, there, there is anything um, that would make me change my mind on this case, Mr. McCarran. I, 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 you know, I, I can't um, make any determination other than what's in the record. So I would just have to assume that you know the testimony that was given was accurate. I don't see anything uh, that would have changed my vote on this. No, there's nothing that would have changed mine. As you stated, the questions were asked and answered repeatedly six different ways because, like anything else, you're going to ask the question different ways uh, to get maybe a different answer. It didn't happen. They kept coming up with the same answers. They looked. There was a reason why you couldn't go here. There was another. Most of the reasons were um, they couldn't get the property the owners would just weren't going to let that happen and they finally found one where it would happen and so do i think there's anything that would make me make a different decision no they did verify i think they did it maybe a little bit on a shorter time frame than they could have i think they probably could have done due diligence a little better and maybe started you know beating feet sooner but it is what it is. Okay, so um, with that, um, I believe we're pretty much um, unanimously um, in that. So um, I can make a motion. Okay. Um, so we're going to reread the whole thing. Okay. okay, so I'd like to make a motion 
to deny the rehearing request for um, SAFCAM LLC, um, owner of New Hampshire number one rural cellular, uh, incorporated the applicant the, as the applicant. Um, the rehearing request from, was from 11 12 19 at the public hearing. Um, again, the address is Al Silva Drive, Sheet A, Lot 993, requesting the following special exception from Land Use Code Section 1A 15, Table 15 1. Uh -huh. Number 276, construct a 130 foot tall monopole communications tower with an associated service truck containing radio equipment. And the following variance is one from the Land Use Code Section 190 38, Section C, Subsection 1, to allow a setback of 23 feet 8 inches to the nearest property line, 400 feet required. Um, and two from Land Use Code Section 190 38. Section C, subsection two, to allow a tower with one mile of an existing tower. It's in a GB zone, Ward 7. Um, I don't think it's well, uh, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> the, the, the uh, approvers of the, to deny this variance um, believe that there was no procedural error, which includes proper notice, denying someone the right to be heard, et cetera. They also believe that it was not an illegal decision. In other words, the board, uh, in other words, we felt that the board did address each of the points of law required for special exception or variance. We also feel that, that the, re the request we're hearing did not include any new uh, information that wasn't presented or available to the board at the original public hearing. And we believe that there is uh, nothing that would or could cause this board to make a different decision. With that, I make a motion to deny this, the rehearing request. Seconded by Mr. Lionel. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's Good five denial. to nothing. So, all right. Okay, so we move on to the next rehearing request. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to use a paper again. Um, so, let me, let me know when uh, you guys are ready to go. I guess I have to ask, why are we hearing this? Well, this is exactly what we're going to have a discussion discuss. about. That was my question too. So, yeah, so, so, so before we even, minute. before I even go through this, um, um, does anybody believe that we should be rehearing this request at this this time, Mr. Carrier? I thought this request is asking us, is appealing to us, the planning board decision. Do I? That is something that this board does not have the authority to do. The planning board decisions are only appealed by the court system. This case, the public hearing was on originally 9-10, September 10th. It was tabled to September 24th. At that time, the board supported <coughs> the request. Within the 30-day deadline, which is our law, the there were two applications or two requests for rehearings. They were both denied on November 12th. So the 30-day deadline for any appeal to this case ended on or about October 24th. The next available meeting was November 12th, 2019. This request, Quite frankly, we did not really know what to do with it because we had never seen something that came in like this. I forwarded it to our attorney's office and they said, the best thing to do is just to present it to the board with a recommendation from staff that this is untimely and should not be considered because it's way past the 30-day deadline. Appeals from the planning board go to the court. Appeals from the zoning board have a 30-day time limit that has already expired. It's well, it's expired two months ago and I think it's that's the answer, so, period. Okay, so with that, is there any discussion on whether or not anybody here believes that we should rehear, uh, rehear this, uh, we should go through the process of the rehearing request? Well, thank you for clarifying that because I don't think we should. It's 
just my opinion. I just wanted to make that clear because I was confused. Uh, I was too. About it. So. Yeah. I'm like, why are we doing something about the planning board? And I sense. believe this is coming, or the, there has been an appeal, or a, something has been filed with the court system. So eventually, um, it'll be addressed one way or another from the court system. But. I believe through this board, unless something is remanded specifically from a court, it does not come from this board from an individual. Yeah. I mean, when we had the rehearing request, our opinion was that we should never have heard this case in the first place. Yes, that's correct. Um, and therefore, there's, the, yeah, I mean, Nothing for discussed. many, many reasons, there's no good reason to, uh, to grant this rehearing request. To, well, to to even and consider it, it. Yeah. to uh, even to consider it, yes. Consider it. Okay. So um, I feel that way. Um, I, do we have unanimous uh, approval of that? Um, in this case, I just want to make sure we're procedurally correct. In case um, if, if this is reviewed, should we take a vote on not taking this up as a review request? There should be a motion and a second, a vote uh, as to the disposition of this letter. Um, I don't believe you need to go through all the, the points of law for a rehearing request, but you can just state that you believe it. it's untimely, it's past the 30-day deadline, and there's, there's no law that the city has that would allow this board to review a planning board decision. Um, really so, I, I, I just simply make a a motion to deny the re hearing request uh, on the ground of uh, Clayton and Georgette Alexander on the grounds that it is not timely. Is it second by Mr. Lionel? Any discussion? Just the untimely is it's beyond the 30 day right. window of appeal. All right, so you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. All right, with that, um, any other discussion? All those in favor of, of not, not entertaining this motion? It's five to nothing. Okay, so that's that. Um, we have some meeting minutes. Uh, we have two yeah, sets. Yeah, there's right? two sets. Two sets, okay. Um, so we'll, we'll do the first one from November. Uh, two sets. <coughs> we have 1126 and 1210. Okay, so. Uh, First one's 11.26. Does anybody see any um, changes or anything that we need to look at? I did not. No, nobody? Okay. Um, <coughs> so if there's none, um, I'll make a motion to approve the November 26, 2019 meeting minutes. Second. Second by Mr. Lionel. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's five to nothing. All right, with the next uh, set of meeting minutes is uh, December. December 10th, meeting minutes. Um, does anybody see any uh, changes or any issues with these meeting minutes? Okay, seeing none, I'll make a motion to approve the December 10th, 2019 meeting minutes. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Currier. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's five to nothing. Okay, um, there was no. There is no agenda for the next meeting, and we did not get any applications in. Wait, wow. wow. So there's no meeting then? No applications. No applications? And, and, no and the deadline for applications has... We, we would have notified the abutters <coughs> today, and we didn't get anything in. So maybe it's because of the holidays or the weather, I don't know. But we will have a meeting the next meeting. Uh, the I don't next think... Meeting we will I, I just, just to clarify, I don't... My preference would be to not meet just for the voting of the officers. If we don't have any agenda, we just do that whenever yes, we're back. I agree. Yeah. Are we all on board with that? Yeah. And our next meeting is going to be on a Wednesday, right? Right. It'll be February 12th because the yes. primary is on the 11th. <coughs> so so um, we've, we've already, we have that on the website. I know we've taken care of it, of all that, so that should be all set. All right. So there's no official requirements that we have to take any vote or anything not to come to the next meeting to do any business. Um, so, w would you send out an email to the whole group? I'll send out an email to yeah, just to make sure. Otherwise, yeah. folks might show yeah. up. There's a list, and we'll we'll post it and we'll put it on the website. I mean, we'll make it known that there's no. no I'm sure make sure the members are not going to show right. up either. That are not here. I know. I already told Rob, so he okay. he was in okay. shock. And it's just <laughs> Nick, and we'll tell. We'll, okay. we'll make sure everybody knows. So. 
Right. It doesn't happen very often. Oh, that's a <laughs> it's first. very rare that it does that, happen. I've never seen that before. Yeah, oh, maybe we should all go out for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas party. <laughs> Any other discussion? Motion to adjourn. The motion is to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Lionel. All those in favor? Eight. That's five to nothing. We're adjourned at 839.